After years of teaching, I've uh, become aware of some faults, some shortcomings that teachers have, including myself at times, when we teach beginning students conversation skills. And so I've developed a top 10 list of what I believe are things that you should be aware of with teachers who claim to teach conversation skills, especially for those students who are just beginning to learn conversation skills. So I'll go through these with you. Uh, just be aware that uh, many places that have courses for studying English conversation will allow you to sit down for one hour to see how a teacher is before you commit to spending monies on their classes. It, and it will give you a good uh, picture of how the teacher uh, conveys his thoughts and handles his classes. So these are things that if I were a student, I would make sure I would be aware of to beware of. The first thing is uh, teachers tend to talk way too much in class. I know that because I'm a teacher. Um, the challenge of the teacher is to get the students to talk, to have the words come out of their lips. Uh, it's ten times harder to do that than for the teacher just to stand there and uh, talk. So. Teachers tend to talk too much. The less they talk and the more the students talk is a good barometer of whether it is a good teacher. The teacher should be able to have the ability to help the students to speak, to provide an atmosphere where they're speaking just as much as the teacher. My goal is always to have the students speak half as much as I do. The second thing is uh, some teachers will fall into a bad habit. You know, if they have four, five, ten students in a class, that they'll let a few students talk too much. It's much easier for a teacher to let students who have a bit of confidence and who have um, some conversation skills to let them talk more than others. In fact, everybody is paying the same amount of money to be in the class, so everyone should be given the opportunity to speak in the class. It is much more difficult and takes much more discipline of, of a teacher to try to help those who can't speak, speak. So beware of a teacher who lets just a few of the students talk too much during the class. Uh, you know, towards the end of the month where people have paid monies to be in a class, you'll find people dropping out because they're not being given the opportunity to talk. Everybody needs the opportunity to talk. The third thing to be aware of is teachers that become what I call glorified dictionaries. Uh, they spend too much time on vocabulary. Vocabulary is something that they can hide behind just because they know many, many words. So if you find a teacher who's always writing words up on the board uh, to um, explain things, um, I would be leery of that. Um, students have dictionaries that they can look up words they don't know. The teacher should not be uh, denigrated to become a dictionary for the students. The fourth thing is um, songs. People don't speak the way people 
sings. Lyrics are confined in songs. They're confined to the amount of uh, music being played and the notes, etc. So many times lyrics are not the way people talk. So songs, once again, in my estimation, are a pure waste of time. Uh, the fifth thing is games. Um, many teachers play games because they have no sense of a methodology of how people begin to get skills on how to talk. Uh, conversation, to me, is not learned through games. Games are just a distraction, a pure distraction. Teach me how to talk. I can play games on my own with my friends later on. But teach me the secrets. What is it that I have to know to be able to talk? No games, thank you. The sixth thing is um, slang, idioms, and sayings. This is worthless for beginning students. Even, just picture this, you're, you're a student who can't speak very well at all and you begin to use an idiom or a saying. Even if it's correct, the people who are native speakers who hear you saying this will think you're a bit odd because these are more highly developed skills and if you can't speak that well and you're using these um, uh, you know, highly developed uh, slangs and idioms, it's just very, very awkward. So I never, ever, ever teach any slangs or idioms to beginning students who want to learn conversation skills. That is the least thing that I ever, ever emphasize. Uh, TOEFL and TOEIC. If you want to learn conversation, skills, stay away from TOEFL and TOEIC. These are pure poison. The reason I say that is that these are highly, um, highly advanced language skills. To get into colleges, native speakers in the United States ta take um, an English test, much like these TOEFL tests. It's very, very, very difficult. They're reading skills. They are not conversation skills. So if you think that you're going to learn conversation by studying TOEFL and TOEIC in the beginning, you, are, you will become quite discouraged. These are high skills which will frustrate you and lead you down a road you really don't want to go to. So once again, if you're just beginning off in the course, your path to learning conversation skills, uh, put TOEFL and TOEIC on the side. Only after you get the satisfaction of being able to speak and speak well can you go into these higher skills. A thing that you should note with teachers is, does the teacher review what they learned yesterday and what they learned a week ago and a month ago? Review is so important. Whatever is worth teaching is worth reviewing. No one gets it the first time around. You have to um, be able to review things many times before it becomes a part of you. It's so easy to forget things. By reviewing them, you constantly get used to the ways of speaking. If you're just going from one topic to the next, to the next, to the next, and don't show how they relate to what you've already learned, to me, it, is, um, it wastes your time. The ninth thing is, does the teacher have a methodology? Does he 
or she have any way to show you how to get from point A to point Z? Is it just random pages out of a book which he's following, or does he really know what he's talking about? Uh, does he know what you're struggling with and how to get you uh, to the end game? And so I would ask them what their methodology for teaching conversation skills. If they aren't able to articulate that, to tell you about that, um, you know, move on to the next teacher. Uh, finally, I would be aware of beware of teachers that have an inability to, to distinguish speaking, reading, and writing skills. Uh, the easiest way that I that uh, that comes to my mind regarding this is that, you know, little children all are able to speak before they go to school. Some of them speak very, very well. Uh, however, their reading skills are deficient. They have to develop reading skills. Reading skills are much more difficult than speaking skills. You don't want to teach people reading skills before you teach speaking skills. And the final and most difficult and most sophisticated skill is the writing skill. And writing, like writing articles, writing books, writing for newspapers, this is the writing essays. These are terribly difficult skills to, to um, master. Uh, many people coming out of high school still don't, in the United States, still don't have good writing skills. So um, each skill has a different set of, of, um, of methods that you need to develop in order to master them. Um, I concentrate on speaking skills. I know nothing about how to develop reading and more highly developed writing skills. So make sure that your teacher is not bringing you into a skill level that you're not really set for. You want to be able to learn how to talk. So basically these are the, the 10 things that I would um, counsel a student to look for. Obviously most students aren't able to understand this because they they're not able to speak well, but um, if, um, if there's anybody that can convey this to new students, I think it would be helpful. Thank you.